Unit 2.2, Hooke's Law. The course outcome that we've focused on is to demonstrate an understanding of the stress-strain behavior of materials and the ability to extract information from the stress-strain curve. This lesson's outcome is to apply Hooke's Law to calculate strain, stress, or elastic modulus for both normal and shear stress conditions. In the last lesson, we looked at the stress-strain diagram for mild steel, and we're going to look at it again. And we want to focus in on that early part of the stress-strain diagram where the behavior is linear. As discussed in the previous lesson, the modulus of elasticity is the slope of the linear portion of the stress-strain curve in the elastic region. We found the slope by picking a point along the linear portion of the curve, finding its stress and its corresponding strain, and we calculated the modulus of elasticity, or Young's modulus, as the rise over the run, which was the stress over the strain at the point. This relationship that relates stress and strain to a constant is known as Hooke's Law. We typically design our products to be elastic because we usually don't want permanent deformation to occur during normal use. This means that we want our materials to behave elastically. So we don't typically want to exceed the yield stress of the material. This means this relationship called Hooke's Law becomes very useful in designing and analyzing engineering products. So here is Hooke's Law. It can be written in various forms. E is the modulus of elasticity. It's also called the elastic modulus or Young's modulus. And it's taken as a constant for a given material and also for a given temperature. We can also write Hooke's Law for the relationship between shear stress and shear strain. In this case, G is the shear modulus of elasticity or modulus of rigidity. You can find values for E and G in most references containing the mechanical properties of materials. Units in the US customary units are 10 to the third KSI, which is also uh, 1 million PSI. In SI units, units for modulus of elasticity or modulus of rigidity are typically given in gigapascals, which is equivalent to 10 to the ninth pascals or 10 to the ninth newtons per meter squared. So what can we do with Hooke's Law? It turns out there's a lot of useful applications. For example, if we know the force on an axially loaded member and we know the member material properties, we can use Hooke's Law to determine how much the member will deflect. The following steps show how this is done. For an actually loaded member, the stress in the member can be found using this equation. Normal stress, sigma, is equal to the internal axial force, P, divided by the cross-sectional area. Knowing the material and their properties, and therefore E, Young's modulus, from which the member is made, the strain in the member can be calculated using Hooke's Law. Here, Hooke's Law is written to solve for normal strain. That's equal to normal stress, which we solve for above, divided by E, the modulus of elasticity. Then the elongation of the member can be calculated using the equation for normal strain. Here's the equation for normal strain written to solve for the change in length. And that equation is the change in length is equal to normal strain times the original length. We can also apply Hooke's Law to find the shear strain in members that are loaded in simple shear. For member loaded in simple shear, the stress in the member can be found using this equation, tau, which is shear stress is equal to the internal shear force, V, divided by the cross-sectional area. And if we know the material, and therefore know the shear modulus, G, the strain in the member can be calculated using Hooke's Law gamma, which is shear strain, is equal to shear stress divided by G, shear modulus. And we're done.